Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sports Chat, another baseball edition, talking Orioles and Nats, as we usually do. And as we usually do, John, we talk a lot of player development with the Orioles, especially. You spend a lot of time in Bowie checking out the Bay Sox, talking to player development people in the organization. So let's start with, especially with uh, the news this week about the promotion of uh, Brian Mattis, left-hander, uh, top pick by the Orioles, number four pick overall in the 2008 draft has been tearing it up in Frederick, right. um, I think 23 consecutive scoreless innings, right. leading to his call-up to Bowie, and I believe he'll be starting Wednesday night uh, against Redding. Yes. Um, is that in Bowie? Do you know? Yes, they're, uh, they're home uh, the second half of this week. Uh, I'll actually be out there Wednesday night so I can get a, uh, a look at him firsthand. Now, the, uh, the corollary to that is that uh, two pitchers have gone up from Bowie to Norfolk. Uh, as the pipeline continues, uh, a lot of good young pitchers in the organization. Troy Patton, who came over to the Orioles in the uh, Miguel Tejada trade from Houston, um, actually had pitched briefly in the big leagues with Houston and had done uh, very well in Bowie the first half of the season. Did not pitch all of last year because of shoulder surgery. So he's gone from Bowie up to Norfolk, and uh, the best pitcher for Bowie the first half of the year, well, one of the other good pitchers for Bowie in the first half of the year, Jake Arietta, who was a, a fifth-round pick in 2007, was just the Eastern League Player of the Week, or Pitcher of the Week. He went up to Norfolk. So uh, Norfolk's now got uh, Chris Tillman and Arietta and Troy Patton, right. uh, who are all probably just as good as everybody that's been called up, Bergeson and Birkin and whatnot. So uh, things are looking good for the Orioles pitching for the next couple of years, I think. Well, you mentioned Tillman. I mean, I hope the Orioles send the Seattle Mariners a nice bottle of champagne at Christmas. I mean, what a, what a swindle that's looking like. Absolutely. And, and Bedard is supposedly might be traded by the Mariners at the trading deadline, and they've gotten very little return in that trade. Right. And the Orioles have gotten Cheryl and Adam Jones – and Tillman, who I think is going to be very good, um, and in the Tejada trade, they got Troy Patton and they got Luke Scott. So you know they're they're in really good shape. I know the Orioles aren't 500. I know a lot of people feel bad because they're languishing in last place in the division, and I know they haven't hit until just this past weekend. But I have a really good feeling about this team. I think there's good young talent here. I think they're going to make a run at 500 before the season's over. I really do. Well, now, Tillman, he's like 21. Yeah, he's the youngest Putting up the good bunch. numbers. Now, is he the kind of guy is they're going to, when they bring him up, that's going to be for good? Or is he not the sort of guy they want to bring up and down? I mean, he's so young, but, I mean, he might be ready soon. Yeah, well, I think they're, they're very conscious of not rushing him because he is younger than any of the other guys. So uh, he may be down there till September, yeah. for all we know. They've certainly got other options. David Hernandez went back down from Baltimore to Norfolk, and if they need somebody else to fill in, Hernandez would probably be the first one to go up. I think Troy Patton might go up to the Orioles before uh, Tillman does, simply because Patton has pitched in the big leagues before. He had a handful of games with the Astros, yeah. uh, uh, two, three, four, something like that, but had like a 356 ERA. So, I mean, he's shown that, you know, if you, you throw him in there in the big leagues, that he can get the job done. Well, I was a little surprised that Hernandez went down and not Birkin. Were you? I mean, Birkin started off fairly well. He's been rocked last couple as the ERA is over seven. Hernandez, I, I was impressed with that with his first start. Um, I was a little surprised. I mean, you think Hernandez, do you rate Birkin ahead of Hernandez? Uh, he's a little older, which is one <laughs> factor, I think. Uh, he was probably, he and Bergeson both were probably ahead of Hernandez at the beginning of spring training. But what I was told was that uh, Hernandez made great strides in the spring and uh, sort of injected himself into the plans for this year maybe if, you know, they needed a couple call-ups. And because of uh, injuries to O'Hara, um, you know, they, they needed a couple guys, so he got the call. Um, well, we, we would be remiss uh, if we had a chat and did not mention Matt Wieters. Right. Still no homers, no ribbies, but had a, he's been hitting the ball out of several multiple hit games in a row. Still doesn't look over match. It's just a matter of time, right? Right. Uh, you know, the, the expectations were so high for him. Um, he took a little time to adjust in, uh, in AAA. You know, after hitting 350 last year, it was kind of a fairy tale season. Started out in Frederick, then went to Bowie for the second half of the year. Um, by the time they called him up after 40 some odd games in Norfolk, he was hitting 295 or whatever and basically, you know, built himself back up. Uh, there was a little bit of a hamstring problem down there in Norfolk that, you know, he had to deal with and missed a couple of games. Uh, he's going to hit 
People don't need to worry about that. It's going to happen. He looks like a major league hitter up at the plate, as we've talked before. He doesn't look overmatched or anything. The ball's just not falling in right. for him right now. It, it's only a matter of time, I guarantee it. They can put him behind there and forget about that position for the next 10 or 12 years. And I still like watching Reimold. I like what I've seen out of him. He's got a healthy, you know, he's hitting over 280, seven homers. And I personally think I'd like to see him moved up in the lineup ahead of Melvin Moore, who's hitting fifth who had an RBI over the weekend, like his first one in a month. I mean, right. he's been a good Oriole, he's been a good guy, uh, but I think it's time. I think Reimold's, you know, he's only been up a couple weeks, but I like what I've seen him. I'd like to see him move up in the order a little yes, bit. Yes, I believe Reimold still leads uh, all American League rookies and maybe all Major League rookies in home runs and RBIs, and uh, it, it seems like he's hitting a lot of balls hard and really getting the job done for them. Could be Reimhold and Bergeson battling for American League Rookie of the Year this year, maybe. Who Could knows? be. Bergeson's up to four right. and two. And I know. More and more impressive every time His out. stuff moves. His ball moves. That ball, I mean, he's not overpowering. Right. But. I mean, you, you hate to make comparisons, but he pitches something like Greg Maddox. He's just smart. He knows how to move the ball around. He doesn't throw that hard. And uh, I know Dave Tremblay likes him a whole bunch because I went out and saw them uh, when Seattle was in town, and uh, uh, Bergson pitched uh, eight full innings, uh, looked really strong, eight shutout innings, and uh, Tremblay was just raving about him afterwards. Okay, so the Orioles uh, in full interleague play this week, hosting the Mets for three and then off to Philadelphia to play the defending world champion Philly, so we have some, some interesting um, games on tap. Uh, quickly to the Nats, as we're taping this, Manny Acta is still the manager. He survived the Monday, which was rumored to be the day he might get, get fired. Now the next rumored day is after this Yankee series this week. It could come Friday. Uh, I mean, Manny Acta seems like a good guy. He obviously has very little you know, talent to, to compete. But do you think uh, it would be the right move to fire them? You think they should just, you know, what do they have to, what do they have to win or lose in this situation? Right. Well, I, I think it may just be a matter of wanting to shake things up. Uh, the one criticism I would have of Manny is this. I think we need to see more fire from him, more passion from him. I, I think there's a little bit of it, an acceptance of, of losing and whatnot, and I think some of that has been translated to the players. Um, they've, I think they've got more errors than they do games played. And that, to me, is an indication, even with somebody like Nick Johnson, who's a great yeah. defensive first baseman, has seven errors already. That, to me, is an indication that, hey, maybe these guys' heads aren't in the games. Now, um, I don't know where the responsibility for that begins with the player and ends with the manager or where that line is or whatever. But, you know, I think they have to do something. This team is on a pace to come pretty close to the 1962 New York Mets record for losses in a season with uh, 120. And uh, as a matter of fact, they've matched the Mets record through the first 60 games. So, you know, they're going to have to do something if they want people to keep coming out to the ballpark. And yeah. whether that means firing Manny or not, I don't know. Well, I'll say this for Acta. I mean, he doesn't, I've never heard him like rip any of his players publicly. And it, it appears that they, they, they like him. It, I think that from what I've been able to withstand watching them, <laughs> that they're playing hard for him. That effort that Johnson had a terrible game against the, the Rays over the weekend defensively. But so I wonder if he were more, you know, were ripping people or more vocal, whether they would, they might, you know, like Elijah Dukes, is he going to, you know. Would they quit on him or yeah, would they well, respond What would his reaction that? be if uh, he was ripped in the, in the media? But That's what you don't know. But what we do know is that what has happened so far hasn't worked in yeah, some sense. Clearly. Whether that's his fault or, or the fault of the people that put together this team. And, of course, Jim Bowden is no longer there. Um, the other thing that works against ACTA is that uh, since Jim Bowden, the GM, resigned in the spring, Mike Rizzo has taken over. Well, Bowden was the one who hired ACTA, and Mike Rizzo, the new GM, the acting GM, the interim GM, may feel like he wants his own guy in there. And that may spell right. the well, end that's of fine. Manny for you know, no other reason greater than that. Okay. Clearly. Okay, well, that's where we stand. We're right in full swing of Major League Baseball. And John and I will check back with you next week to update the O's and Nats.